Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo and we're here at Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood. I'm delighted to be joined with Ilya with a fantastic movie, Out of This World. Let's take a look at the clip. Um, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the New Filmmakers LA family and thank you so much for bringing your film to us. Thanks for having me. Um, your film truly is out of this world in, in the context of being such a brilliant film as thank well. You. Um, but for those that haven't seen it, tell us a brief synopsis. Um, out of this world is an action adventure, musical comedy, space opera. Uh, so it's uh, essentially about a alien that uh, sort of rambunctious and mischievous that breaks out of their spaceship during a routine cow abduction um, because they've always wanted to visit Earth. And uh, when they're there, they run into Ariana, who is a down and out rock star turned waitress. Um, and those two get up to a, a night of adventure across, you know, planet Earth or whatnot. So yeah. Um, it's uh, yeah, that's that's essentially what it's about. But they're they're both each other's sort of ca you know, like um, uh, better halves. But yeah. they've had to travel across the galaxy to find each other, to and you other. and you realize why they're perfect for each other along the way. So. It's a brilliant film. Thank like you. it really is, and it, it was extra special to see it on the big screen yesterday. Yeah. I was like, this is mesmerizing, and and I just love your incredible imagination. It was really truly spectacular. Yeah, it's a musical, so you kind of wanna. You want to get up and move, exactly, you had to, I know, I did, I, uh, so, actually yeah. when I watched it the yeah. first time I was dancing around the room with my cat, yeah. so you know, <laughs> it's all I had at the time. Um, but no, seriously, a, an incredible imagination you have, and I, I love these characters that you brought to life. Where did the inspiration come for you in creating a particular story? Um, so Out of This World is a very good example of the beautiful dance that can happen between art and copy, because yeah. um, the creative producer of the piece, Marlene Lacasse, is very good at building worlds, and I'm very good at telling story, hopefully. And so yes. when the two of us meet, we have this beautiful sort of art and copy relationship, because the idea was hatched as a music video treatment oh. uh, that didn't get awarded, but that we fell in love with the story, you know, and sort of like the concept yeah. about, and then decided to approach it in an innovative way and think about, you know, how do we make this a bit more cinematic than just a music video? Um, and then it kind of all clicks together when we find Ariana and the Rose has this lovely song called Lonely Star. So once we found that song, the lyrics were so good, so good. that I was like, I can write around this. I can, I can wow. craft this into a screenplay. And we elongated the song from 3 minutes and 20 into 17 minutes, musical number, by using its stems and all its production assets. We gave that to the composer. So it's a lot of, like there's some really good examples of how departments can work very well together in very new and innovative ways. Well, when you've got that talent to combine all of your different attributes and then build together, I mean, that's just, yeah. that's wonderful. I love that you, it came from the song yeah. that evolved mm -hmm. into the movie. That's mm -hmm. a rarity and that's yeah. special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like adapting a novel yeah. in a weird way, but you're adapting a song. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And, uh, and I, didn't, I really didn't see the script and the structure until I heard that song. Up until, po up until that point, it was just, you know, alien night out. What kind of trouble do they get into? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. then all of a sudden when Ariana's song came to me, I was like, okay, this is a two-hander. It's actually about the two of them. Yeah. And then it sort of all clicked together because her words were so perfect and the themes so were perfect. so clear yeah. in those lyrics that I thought, yeah, this is easy peasy, we'll do that. There was so, such a wonderful essence of, uh, you know, kind of morality of these two people that mm -hmm. came from different worlds that, you know, they, they needed each other, you mm -hmm. know, they, they, they found yeah. each other. It was finally, finally they made sense. Right, um, but that somehow, sometimes that's how friends feel when you meet them for the first yes. time. Yes, they instantly make sense. And yes, I, that feeling is so rare and special that I kind of, I kind of wanted to tip my hat to it. You know, I kind of wanted to celebrate those. I don't know the friends you meet along the way that are old friends now. Yeah, you know, it's that feeling. Of, oh. Absolutely, and just even just the collaboration that you you've made in this particular film, like it's it's taken you all 
taking a village to make it yeah, in yeah, the first place sure. to, to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, breaking it down a little bit, visually mm -hmm. this was spectacular. Thank like, you. it really was. I mean, I was just in love with the production design, the colors, the lighting, the sound. I mean, it all just, just yeah. articulated so well together. Tell us a little bit about the design of that because, I mean, it really was special visually, costume, everything to watch. Sure. Well, um, I mean, nuts and bolts, Ariana, has very earthy colors like yellows and greens yes. and reds and Nebi has very space colors like you know uh, purple and um, blues and and uh, violets and things like that and so I, I built a visual sort of arc to when they were uh, you know alone in that color trope and then when they combined and then so and then in the third act like in the in the, in the sort of like the final sequence all of them have come together so I, I kept it simple like that there was earth colors space colors and then you know, thesis, like thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. Mm -hmm. And I kind of did that all the way along. So like, Ariana has boots, Nebi has boots. You know, she does her boots, yeah. Nebi does her boots. Like yeah. kind of like winking and nodding how they are already, they're already um, mirroring each other. Yes, they're already yes, soulmates, yes. twin stars, yeah. twin flames as they twin say. Flames, yeah. Even Even when before they've met because they do, they do things the same. And so yeah. there's a lot of little attention to detail in that regard. And then um, Nebi, has a power as far as being an alien is that they're a they have the ability to control light so as nebi moves through shots they change the light with them as they go mm. so i took that idea out for a spin in different ways you know how does that happen in the spaceship how does light interact with this person and yeah. then how does it happen in the diner when she's on earth and now she's dealing with earth lights you know so they're all going off or they're changing colors because Nebi has the, the power to sculpt light, yeah. which is a cinematographer's nightmare, but yeah. also also dream, right? Because light, dream, yeah. light is such a big character of the film. Such a big character. You know, and we were using mixing boards for the lights and like choreographing wow. them like a live show, basically. Wow. Because the actor would move and then the lights would sort of follow them. So clever. So, yeah, it, it's yeah, it's a simple idea, we, but it's one it's like these these are ideas where you get. You have a one idea and then you kind of kick its tires for 17 yes. minutes. Like, yeah. how do we explore this in this scene? How do we explore in that scene? And then I also tried to make it where there was a real, like, the opening scene was very, is very 90s and very sort of like indie film. And then we go into the spaceship, which is a little French new wave. Yeah, it's a little beautiful. bit more abstract. Then we go back to Earth, which is more Hitchcock. And so I tried to give each sequence also its little postcard, like what, yeah. it, what it was sort of tipping its hat to. Yeah, I love, I, mean? felt like, fact, yeah. It's, I love that. It felt like, I love that you used the visualization of a postcard because it, it, really, it really felt that. And yeah. they all felt very individual and, and kind of offered different, they made you feel different things, obviously. Yeah. Um, but. I also love that these characters that you brought to life, like what was it like for you as a director to kind of, just to kind of create a film like this and how did you work with your actors? You know, this film actually commits the cardinal sin of <laughs> sci-fi movies uh, and, and especially alien movies, is that it shows you the alien. You're not really supposed to hang out. If you look at Arrival or Alien, yeah, you don't, right. you know, the whole thing is that don't show, you know, like leave it up to the imagination. Yeah. Close Encounters, I guess, is an exception to that. Yeah. But, <laughs> but the, 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 the thing was is that halfway through, I realized that I wasn't making a sci-fi movie. What I was really making was Edward Scissorhands. This is, <laughs> this is magical realism. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not really sci-fi. It's, it's The Little Prince more yeah. so than anything else. Yeah. And once I was able to do that, then, then I could really start to think of Nebi yeah. in a safe way, like to be like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make Edward Scissorhands. Like, I'm gonna, mm. I'm gonna, it, they happen to be an alien. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, but yeah. that's, that was my way into that character. And then actually, the screenplay was written for non-binary. Mm -hmm. It was written for they, them, and there all the way through before we had cast our, um, Bex. Mm -hmm. um, Bex Taylor Klaus, who plays Nebi, is a non-binary icon yeah. in, in, on the acting scene. And so, but, but I thought because of the themes of trying to give um, adolescence across many different communities and culture a way to be reassured that there is someone for them out in the world and that there is a group to which they do belong, I thought it would be prudent to write it for non-binary out the gate. Yeah. Because I feel like the LGBTQAI plus community has that conversation in the front seat right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. But it applies. Yeah. It applies wide. And so if I've done my job right, you can go in it through that door. Yeah. But anybody can have something to talk about with their generation above them or whatever. 
depending on what ails them at that moment. Absolutely. Because no, puberty I, yeah. is puberty. Yeah. Whether you, you know, no matter where on planet Earth you come from, it's always kind of a drag. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think you yeah. did a great job in, in articulating that through the film and, and through that lens as well. Like really, really, really. Um, I mean, listen, you're making a piece that has, you know, beautiful score, music, yeah. um, you know, really, uh, you know, just, just a lovely sound voice, everything. You give us this world that you created. You've got all these different um, essences of, of just friendships that you brought. I'm so curious, like, what's the experience been like? We, you know, having it, we loved having it at New Filmmakers. What's it been like sharing your film and what's the reaction been like for you? Um, well, it was lovely to be there last night. Thank you for having us, of course. first and foremost. Um, really, really loved showing it at New Filmmakers LA. It was a, really, really treat, real, a real treat for us. Um, and it concludes the festival run for this film, so it's oh. a very, very special place for it to end. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I think, I think it's doing its job because the, the people that do come after, up to me after the movie that, that want to say something, you can see them lit up as if they're like six years old again or 11 or you can sort of see that inner child like you know I really, you know they're sort of giddy and that's yeah. kind of what i wanted i want it to be i wanted it to be a bit of a joy factory and i think so when it's when it's when the when it's really struck a chord with people that's what i get from them is this sort of kid they're very kiddish about it which is exactly the point yeah it's exactly the point you, you know i have to say to, jo to join those people as well like i watching your film I I kind of forgot where I was like yeah, cool. I was I was back in my imagination again yeah and I think it was a place that you took us and I think it was so nice because you just kind of remind us all there's that that beautiful childlike you know kind of imagination we'll never ever lose that we had as children yeah. but also just given that as adults as well was was so special so yeah. really really well done it's a very special film Thank like you. you know it really is I, wa I wanted to I wanted to do something where you could go with your mom or dad and yeah and they could turn to you and be like so what did we th what did we think about that yeah let's talk about that you know but but but, but you know there were so many de from every department that you know you put into makers project I mean you nailed it from just you know production to direction to actors to visually to score I mean it was a really really great job so I'm very excited Thank you. I know what's where we're, which world you're bringing us next and what is next for you um, well I run filmatics which is yeah. the boutique uh, production studio and I run fever content which is the digital marketing agency so there's always something for me to get up to uh, so on that level I'm doing a live show that is actually space themed again with Cosmo Gold. It's a lovely band. Oh wow! I did just produce, uh, executive produce a another alien film, which is very different than this. Oh wow! It's scary. It's a short, but it's very short. It's a real three minute biter, um, and that's by director Lorenzo Manetti, who's exquisite. I can't wait to I can't wait to show his work to the world, and uh, I'm executive producing a, a music video for another director called Vihang Walve, uh, for the artist April Henry. But in terms of me as a director, um, I'm doing a 180. Uh, it's a police thriller uh, that uh, will be my next feature. And um, it's currently with two great writers uh, who are out of the Mindhunter camp. Wow. And, but because of this, you know, what's going on in town, I haven't been able to see the pages because they went to pages and then everything went belly up. So I'm, I'm yeah. waiting for those pages to come back. And the minute they do, um, we will start to package the movie. But it is. It's a cat and mouse sort of detective thriller that takes place leading up to and on Valentine's Day. Oh wow! Oh, can, listen, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. Well, well done. Thanks very well much. done. Um, well, we're very happy to have you part of the new filmmakers early family. Thank, so you. thank you for bringing out of this world to us. But um, we're very excited to see your next project. So thank you very much for all that you do. So Thanks for thanks you. for having us so well. Really, thank appreciate you, it. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much.